Joy to the world, blah blah la la. Ne 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 ne. Hello everyone, it's the twenty sixth of December, the year of our Lord, twenty twenty one. Right after Christmas, I'm chilling at home, enjoying some linden tea, and today. We are going to talk about how to turn your own speculative evolution projects into books or magazines with nothing else but the humble Microsoft Word. That's right, ladies and gents. You only need this to make your projects more substantial, more permanent. Granted, I mean, there are some tricks it cannot do. But for the publication of basic books, Microsoft Word is enough. Heck, some of my own books I made with Microsoft Word. Let me show you. cmcosaman.com. Let's go. I hope you're having a nice holiday season, everyone. I hope everyone is nice and healthy. Okay, let's go to books. And scrolling down. I've written many books in my time. Heck, the original All Tomorrows was actually edited by Microsoft Word. Nothing else. And these sketchbooks I used to publish, Tangent Worlds. I mean, let's take a look at them. Here we go. Maybe I should have just shown you the file. Oh, it's going to take a century. Why are you like this? Okay, so it's uh, it's opening here, and you can see Microsoft Word is actually a much underrated software for creating books. Heck, I think it's more useful for creating photo books than it is for actual writing and like word composition. Like these were all done with Microsoft Word, and now. Let's take a look at how we can do such similar books. In the root of it all, books of speculative evolution are just juxtapositions of text and images. Here, there's some text, there's some images. That's that. That's, that's all you need. So let's launch Microsoft Word. I was talking with Christian Klein He's a really nice, very talented speculative evolution creator. And we were talking about just how many spec evo projects these days are just made on Instagram or even Reddit or other platforms. And, you know, if you are the maker of such works, yes, you do get a kind of buzz. You get a kick out of creating these things and sharing them and watching the likes go up. But... These projects, some of them are spectacular, but these projects are always dependent on the platform that hosts them. And that's a dangerous thing. What if five years from now, Instagram gets unpopular or it, some AI decides to delete your creature because it thinks it looks like porn? You must own your own creations. You must have control over what you produce. And I agree, it means a little less of the dopamine kick you get from sharing them online on social media but so be it okay so here is microsoft word the first thing you do upon launching microsoft word you must go to this little sign here it shows you all the characters so when you type hello everyone you see even the spaces show this is very like a vital thing because it helps you keep a clear composition in whatever you are doing okay just a second i want to ha huh, i'm hearing the feedback of my own voice which is not really good okay so let's have a experimental book we turned on the non space characters thing which is of course useful so the first page this is going to be your title page let's keep writing lizard 
world. One quick note about fonts. I just use Times New Roman or uh, what's the name? Minion is always a safe bet. This is Lizard World by C. M. Kozeman. Okay? So now if you look at the page layout, you can s actually change the size. And I'm just gonna keep to an A4 size, but you can make many, many different sizes or even a, a custom size. So if you want to make a, a square book or a, a landscape orientation with more uh, like uh, sideways views for creatures, have at it. But now I'm just gonna keep to a portrait orientation. I'll just turn this into italics so it looks cooler. Lizard World by CM Kozeman. Now there was a view to see, oh, not here, not here. Just bear with me. Uh, 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 uh. Was it this one? No. It must always be at print layout. But there's a way to see all the pages. Hmm. Okay. Anyways, whatever you do, when you're making a book, your first page is your title page. But this is important. It is not the image rich cover that you would have on a printed book. Usually that is printed differently. So this is just a like placeholder cover. And let's place some images here because it's Lizard World. I go to my assets folder. I'll just launch it with Adobe Bridge. Oh my God. What's this? Oh, those darn cats. They're hacking my computer again. Believe me, I would have nothing to do with these files. Who put it there? Oh my God. Don't tell me everyone. I mean, I'm under cyber attack by these cats and they're always hacking my computer and replacing my images with images of sexy anime girls. Swear it's not me. But if you want to help me get rid of these cyber cats, these bad cats, these few bad apples, you can support me on Patreon. Just donate to me any amount you wish on patreon.com and I can pay this blood ransom. These evil cats have been old holding over my head. I, Maron, you don't know the half of it. Anyways, but that was a joke, but all jokes aside, really, you know, here I am showing you a nice trick of the trade. So all and any donations on patreon.com, they're really welcome. So here's our assets folder, okay? I select this thing. What should I do? Just copy. Now that's the beautiful thing about Microsoft Word. If you go paste, oh no. Well, it doesn't work that way. Okay, you just go insert, photo, picture from file. Yes, go to assets and Oop, this was too big. Now it kind of blew it out of proportion. Okay, now you select the image. Uh, what did the... Oh, what, what's this sign doing here? Anyway, you select the image and... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, I want it to be on the center. Okay, so you go by the image, okay? And you select center orientation. Now... It's in the center. Yeah, so this is like a nice cover we have. So now, your best friend here is go to insert, break, page break. You open a brand new page and it's really vital for you to do it like this. Some people go for a new page. <coughs> this. This is why I have the paragraph display tool on because this is just like a no-no, you know, it just wastes memory, it's terrible for design, so don't do it. Just go here and go to insert, break, page break. So now your second page is blank because this was your cover. Now you're going to go do another page break, insert, break, page break. The reason for this is like, imagine a real book, there's the first cover page and after that, should be blank then there's a second sort of placeholder cover so you can just keep writing here uh, lizard world by cm 
cause a man again except this time it could be smaller usually maybe 20 22 something like that center that thing again and once again take it to the center of your page yeah like that so now you go make another page break here now you have your information page you know when you have a real book and you kind of turn behind the cover and you see all the publisher info this is going to be your publisher info page except you're not a big publisher so what you do is you take set the text size to eight very small and just zoom in and write write what this book really is lizard world of course you move the orientation to the side by c m kozeman press enter oh what's this Oy. just a second ah, okay by c m kozeman usually some people write editions because when you have a master book document you always go back and correct things but it becomes confusing to name it like first edition second edition whatever so you just say this version created on 26 12 20 21 okay then if you feel to be if you feel official you can write your contact details uh, Kozaman at gmail.com or your website cmkozaman.com and that's it now if you can also write any disclaimers like uh, if you want this is a work of fi fiction etc etc I mean this is up to you but you know this is your official page this helps people really identify what this whole book is and that's like a rule of publishing generally so now you move out okay so you had your first cover blank second cover publisher details then you can really 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 begin to write your book usually this is the place where you would have a table of contents By the way, now that we are really writing the book, the font size shouldn't be something huge like 36. Usually I go for like 14 for like headlines and 12 for uh, like body text. Except in most of these online projects, you go through a lot of updates. So maybe don't even have a table of contents but when you have a finished book this is where the table of contents goes so just i'm just leaving it here for posterity's sake but you know if you are like if your project is just information stage or if you're making this thing like a magazine or you're just kind of in the flow you can ignore the table of contents but i'm inserting it here just to just to be safe so we insert another page break now here is a wait where is our page break okay insert break page break okay here is a rule of book publishing you never start a new chapter from an old page so you have the front this is going to be the paper behind this so you're never going to start it from an even page my mistake this is the front of that page this will be behind this page and then this will be the front because it's a table of contents and then you never if it's even don't go there if it's odd that's the way to god i try to make it rhyme but it doesn't rhyme but you never write a chapter heading or a section heading on an even page so you insert another page break we're wasting a lot of paper here but believe me uh, this is the way to make like proper books and when you when you clear this hurdle then you can really like do a 
vertically integrated whole book project. Okay, so let's start. Uh, introduction. Uh, I'm writing in size 12. Oh, also this is a place to go set your spacing. I always set one and a half spacing just for it to be more legible and easier to read. Na, 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 na. Okay, nothing. Nothing out of... Okay, so now our book looks like this, okay? Very solid. Okay, so now I'm just going to have some lorem ipsum text because, you know, I'm not going to actually live write a book here. Lorem ipsum is this blank text that designers use and it's just blank copy. Come on. Come on. What? Okay, where is the text? Oh. I just want to copy Lorem Ipsum. Huh. Okay, this. I copy that. I open my text edit tool. If you're using Apple, this is really useful. If you're using Windows, it's the Notepad tool. I think Notepad and Text Edit, they are really good text editors. You just paste it here. The good thing about text edit is it clears all the formatting and it makes the text suit your style of choice. So I go back here, introduction. Oh, by the way, when you're skipping lines, you can also press shift or option enter, in which case it does this. But there's this kind of thing. Now I never do that. I just press enter, bam, solid one hit line skip. A new paragraph for each line. That's how I like to use it. You should do it too. So I paste my lorem ipsum. Because this is a, like a subheading, I make it bold. And remember how we said maybe 18 was a good size for section headings? What was this? 14? I said 18. Ha! <laughs> and bold. So this is our introduction. Okay. Now I could just write, you know, write, write, write away. Check, 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 check. Check, check. Okay. And uh, okay, I go another. Let's start talking about the creatures. Let's open another page. Good. This is an odd page. So let's go to our assets. The one that was not hacked by the evil cats. Okay. These are my pictures. These are just old pictures from an older project I made. I mean, usually, you must be really tidy, you know? Like Jordan Peterson says, You must keep a tidy room. The state of your room is the state of your mind. But, you know, he's really onto something there, you know? Keep tidy when you're making digital projects. Keep your assets tidy. So, I insert... Oh, 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 photo, picture from browser. Oh, no, not from browser. Just, you know, when I'm trying to act professional, I make a mistake. This always happens. Picture from file. Go. Okay. Let's have one of the creatures here. Okay. Lovely. Okay, now it's all up to you how you can design and make these things. I usually have the picture and then I have the header below it. So I call it mm, chicken lizard, whatever. Once again, this is size 18, make it bold, skip a line, then you go to size 12 and write the scientific name, Gallosaurus mm, bidactylus, which means two-toed. And just because I'm a fancy guy, I write the K with the Greek K, you know, C. Get the fuck out of here! That's like later 18th century thing. Dactylus. Who writes like that? This is the way original Greeks wrote. And it's good enough for me. Another rule of writing, at least for zoology, is always putting the scientific names in italics. That's very, like, a must, you know. It separates the fools from the chads. And also, the second scientific binomial is always 
it always starts with a lowercase letter. Some people do this. <coughs> That's like a no-no. If you do that, you can't become a speculative evil chat. Okay. So now I skip another line. I undo the italics. And, you know, I just write my text again. Now, I'll give you a little hint when writing about how an animal is in... Like, how to write about speculative creatures in general. Here is a hint. All right? I've studied all sorts of speculative evolution books, science fiction books, and, like, proper zoology books. And I realized that the best way to write about animals falls under these few headings. First, the animal's shape, form, and anatomy. Okay, let's remove this now. Then, the animal's behavior. Okay, behavior. Oh my god, is it set to American? So uncivilized. Behavior, yeah. Color, that's the way to write. It's not called American, it's called English. Anyways, then the animals, natural history, and evolution. Of course, you can write your own way about all of these things, but this is just something I find useful, and it's kind of like a neat trick of the trade for speculative evolution in general. Then you write about the animals interaction with other organisms. Okay. And then the animals interact people if if applicable and then wait something is hmm okay there's something weird with my video so maybe the sound is failing but anyways maybe these guys are eating up too much memory so let's shut them down Maybe this guy is eating so, too much memory. Get the fuck out of here. Okay. Okay, so there's a weird lag with my sound. Well, since I don't edit my videos, we'll see how this thing turns out at the end. But okay, this is how you write about a creature in general. And then, life stories and uh, memories of its discoverer if applicable so now this is like a neat uh, guideline to write about speculative creatures in general you know you describe the animal briefly in a few sentences and even though you have a picture it really helps because when you write about an animal like you probably when you're writing about this thing you say ah it's got these ear flaps and maybe the ear flaps are not very noticeable in the initial drawing but when you write about it then the reader will kind of notice it and that's really important then you write about its behavior, what it does, you know, how it moves, and this is a really fun part, and it just helps the drawing come to life in the reader's mind. And then you write about its natural history and evolution. If if you have multiple creatures and many animal groups, this is a good thing to write about, and it gives your project a little more consistency in general. And then, if possible, you write about its interaction with other organisms, you know, what it eats, which animal it runs away from, things like that. And then you write about the animal's interaction with people, if applicable. And now here's a neat little trick. So uh, let's select this thing again. Okay. So imagine you're writing about like this animal does this, this, this and that. Okay. And then you got like, like, like an eyewitness statement. So like the chicken lizard scared me. It was so fast. I was so scared. Okay, so this is a quote by someone. In like official proper traditional book design, when you have a quote, 
you usually decrease its font size by one or two increments so you make it like 10 and then you click this thing so it's kind of indented in a different paragraph you skip go back and just uh, sorry uh, you skip go back and just keep writing as um, as you used to okay so wait huh so it's like a kind of neat design kind of thing and when you look at it then it's like neat and consistent okay so this is how you basically lay out your creatures and of course you can use the same design for writing about landscapes writing about writing about incidents writing about practically anything that comes to your mind so now i'm just going to cheat and just copy this whole section i'm going to insert another page break and then just boom okay wait huh okay so now i have another let's insert another picture here oh not this insert another picture from file here I say this dark lizard whatever whatever so anyway this is how you put together a book in its most basic form you can change a, a lot of things here heck I mean you can make um, the page orientation different to fit your art you can change the arrangement of the chapters but this is just a good good layout idea for you to compose your books now I'm gonna show you a little more trick you go insert you insert page numbers now this is gonna be a book so you must have page numbers so now you have page numbers and also because this is a book you click this top section you know in Microsoft Word does this so you have a header on each page you click center so it's oriented on the center you you make this like size 8 or something and this must always be in capitals you just write the title and of the book and maybe your own name if you want lizard world by nah, not by c m Cozeman. and once again make sure the font is the same as the rest of the document avoid using multiple fonts i mean at at most two a, a major font and a minor font but you know if you really chat even that's not necessary just one font man one font is good enough for everybody and with the headers you must make them like a lighter tone of gray so it doesn't really blend with the rest of the book okay so this is it now this is the best thing about microsoft word you go file save as pdf lizard world save it on the desktop boom and then save your document too so it's lizard word doc x whatever great so now i just quit microsoft word i quit this as well i don't need but you really need text edit or um, notepad open on one side to just clear the things you copy don't save okay so you see now we have a pdf this is so good unbelievable now you have like a, a real book to persist through the ages you know it's not like some instagram project it's not like bubblegum i mean you are making all these amazing world projects amazing art and putting it on instagram it's like it's like mona lisa being uh, crammed into a bubblegum package you know something like that uh -uh, don't do it man show some more respect for your own works because you are all doing great work out there you're making these projects that will leave mine buried in the dust you know and that's the way it should be now here's a little like book template now if you view this with um two page in a two page view then you see why we did this empty blank pages in this is our cover boom side another side now this is the inner cover you see the text with the provenance your publisher's info table of contents if you need it 
blank introduction and then you know introduction lasted two pages here here and then we begin another chapter and then this is of course my mistake this should have been another blank page here but you get the idea but just see how cool this looks this is the best thing in the world microsoft word microsoft word you don't need anything else microsoft word is a better tool for book design than it is for actual typing just keep it simple keep it consistent don't be too fancy with the styling art text art text boom bam boom and also i'm just gonna sing a little song so you can screenshot this thing and it will help you write about your own speculative evolution creatures in the future i'm gonna sing my song and you can screenshot this and please don't forget to donate to me on patreon.com you won't believe the trouble i am having with these goddamn cats they're hacking my computer they're transforming my walls into liminal spaces they come out of my chair they eat my pasta and break my typewriters these cats i've had enough of these cats and you know i need these patreon donations so i can work some black magic and banish them to the circle of hell they came from really i mean last week they turned my wife's chair into a purple piece of shit what are these cats doing i can't believe it anyways this was it have merry christmas happy new year happy 2022 i hope this will be a good year for all of us and here it was my little microsoft word tutorial please respect your works more don't i mean okay i know the buzz you get from sharing them on um, instagram or whatever or twitter but before that commit them to your own book and then release those images you know you must delay this kind of uh, immediate pleasuring that the internet offers and then your works can really shine and their beauty can be much better appreciated anyways here is my christmas song are you ready are you a chunky or an imbecile i know you are both chunky imbecile okay goodbye everyone this has been cm cozaman boom